Hey there, folks. Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. We got a little mail. Santee, do a video on soda, please. The ultimate hunt. Soda pop, the old west. We can do that. Oh, bartender. Sarsaparilla, please. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in a dirty glass. You all may be surprised to find out carbonated soft drinks go back to the 1700s. I know I was. Beer, although carbonated, is not a soda pop. It interestingly goes much farther back in time. Our soda pop started out as soda water, which is water infused with carbon dioxide gas. In 1767, Joseph Priestley... He tried to bring something fine into your ugly world and you shot him for it. No. No, Joseph Priestley uh, pioneered the method to do the infusing and, well, away we go. Just like today, its popularity soared. In fact, people thought that soda water had health benefits. In the 1860s, there were 123 plants producing effervescent water in America. That number steadily grew to almost 2,800 by the turn of the century. So, the idea of a cowboy sipping a glass of seltzer water is a definite possibility. But when did they get the sweetness? 1833 France, the first effervescent lemonade was sold, and it started a trend of putting fruit juices and syrups in for flavor. The term pop is credited with the year 1861. However, I found a reference from a Montana newspaper from 1856. Sarsaparilla. Whiskey, Chester. Sarsaparilla comes to us from the Smilax Ornata plant. Like its relative root beer, it was used by Native Americans for medicinal purposes before Europeans ever set foot in the New World. Up until 1910, sarsaparilla was registered as a treatment for syphilis. Yeah, it didn't help, but it sure tasted good. Some traditional root beer recipes are made from sassafras root with a little bit of sarsaparilla and some other plant ingredients. It was originally brewed as a tea. Dr. Charles Hires made a concoction with soda water, effectively marketing the first bubbly root beer in 1876. A pharmacist in Waco, Texas named Charles Alderton exhaustingly experimented with mixing a bunch of fruit juices together to make a soda pop. It was wildly successful. You might know it better as Dr. Pepper, established in 1885. Dr. James Verner tried to make a drink that would calm upset stomachs, he concocted a barrel of this remedy and left to serve in the Civil War. When he returned four years later, James found the stuff was delicious and even more potent. Thus became the first ginger ale. Of course, I'm sure you're all wanting to know about Coca-Cola. In 1886, Dr. John Pemberton invented and sold this beverage in Atlanta for five cents a glass. Like the previously mentioned soft drinks, it was originally made to cure a bunch of ailments and addictions like alcohol and morphine. Ironically, there was a small percentage of cocaine in it, which at the time was not illegal. It's the real thing. Interestingly, a competitor was around that gave Coke a run for their money. Pepsi. Nope, they didn't come out until 1893. It was called Moxie, and at one point it even outsold Coca-Cola. With all these doctors creating soda pop, did Old Westians actually get these drinks from their druggists rather than their barkeep? Well, maybe. Do you have any soda pop? <laughs> <laughs> well, what'll it be? Lemon, strawberry, or lilac, sodbuster? Nobody likes a lilac. The soda fountain was patented in 1819 and was designed to be hidden under a counter. Charles Alderton, of Dr. Pepper fame, was fond of making up all sorts of delicious soft drinks in his pharmacy. Who can take tomorrow? By 1892, William Painter invented the crown bottle cap, which was instrumental in keeping the carbonation trapped inside those bottles. So, now you could carry a bottle of your favorite fizzy refreshment in your saddlebags. <laughs> it's amazing that soda pop continues to be one of the most popular beverages to this day. Oh. If I didn't mention your favorite brand, understand that there are far too many for me to lay out in one of my videos. I encourage you to do some research on your own if you want to know more. Okay, Dan, so... Sarsaparilla comes from the Smilax Ornata, which is a whoa, perennial trick. 
Smilax. Does anything to do with X-Lax? Will this keep you regular, too? No, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think it has anything to do with X-Lax. Oh, you said it was Snotty Lax and Sharp or Snot. No, sm- <laughs> Smilax. Or- Smilax, I did. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not it's not a product. Or not it's a- that. Does that mean it's maybe Smilax or it's not? A- the other one is uh, Sassafras Root makes the root beer. Wow, did you and that just comes ignore from- me? I, I did. Okay. I did. Go so, ahead. So go, I'm trying go, to go go ahead. I'm trying to educate you here. Okay. All right. That's so this a is lost cause. I forgot what I was going to say. Sassafras root comes from us. It comes to us from the Native Americans. Yeah. Really? Native yeah. Americans they have roots growing out of their feet. You want me to believe that? They don't have roots growing out of their feet. They you the said root. it was from Native American roots. All right, folks. Thanks for watching. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Here. Have a drink, you'll feel better. Don't forget, folks, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on Down the Trail. It really is good. Try it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. That's good. I think you said the word <laughs> <laughs> I'm like 90% sure you Good.